Hello, in this presentation we will create a sales by item report within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will be creating a sales by item report. If you have the backup file, you can restore by going to the file and restore. Current open windows open can open open windows by going to the view drop down open window list. And the home page is open and found at company drop down home page. We will be working with a sales by item report. In order to work with that report, we will be going to the report center found at reports drop down. First item, the report center. We can find this too by going to the drop downs here, but we're going to be looking at the report centers for this section. So we'll go to the report center here. And we want to be, I'm currently in the grid format. Uh, you may like the list format. It's going to be a little bit more compact, but the grid format gives us a good little visual here uh, as we go through these items. Make sure you're on the standard tab. Sometimes it could go to these other tabs and you'll be lost. As, why is it looking different? Because we need to be on the standard tab. At least I do that quite often. And we're going to go down to the sales item here. We're in the sales information. We looked at the sales by customer last time. We might want sales by item, meaning inventory items, meaning the things we actually sell and or the services we provide. We want to see a breakdown of what types of things that we provide are pulling in the most sales in terms of dollars. So we'll scroll down. We're going to scroll down to these items past the sales graph to the sales by item reports. We have a summary and a detail available. We're going to take a look here at the summary report running the summary summary report for sales by item summary. And there it is. It's, I'm going to maximize the screen here. Maximize the screen. And we're going to change the dates to 01028202282. Uh, I'm sorry, 21. It should be one more time. 01. 0121 to 022821. January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021 is what we are looking for. What we're doing now is we're breaking out our sales numbers and we're breaking it out by items in this case. Those items either inventory items or service items. So if we look at a report of the sales report on the income statement, we could take a look at this number. Here's our total, 1875.40. Where does that tie out to our core financial statements? Our balance sheet and income statement should be on the balance sheet or the income statement, also called the profit and loss. If we want to check that out, which we do, we're going to go up top, reports drop down, go to the company and financial, profit and loss, first report. We will then change the dates. We're going to say it's going to be from 010121 to 022821 or January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021. And we then see our total here at the 19275. Slightly different if we go back to the sales by item, which is the 18775. And if we go back once again to the sales and loss. Why is that? It's our adjusting entry we made at the end of the time period. Double clicking on this merchandise sales, we'll see uh, this 500. Now that, that was reversed. What happened is this sale was made in or recorded in March and well, that's when the invoice was made and therefore when the sale was made, we'll talk more about this uh, as we do the adjusting entries. We pulled it back into this time period and then we reversed it in doing so, making the financial statements right on an accrual basis as of the end of the month and then reversing it as of the first day of the next month. So if we change this date, the second date of this transaction report to one day after and say, OK, and refresh, we see then we reversed it here. Those are our adjusting entries and our reversing entry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to recognize that. I'm going to close this out. I'm just going to recognize that by and check it by saying I'm going to change the date here to one date after, after the reversing entry has been adjusted. And now we're back to that 1875.40. And that then matches what we have here. So in essence, going back to the profit and loss, what we're doing is we're breaking out this number by detail. We want to be able to 
basically say what the difference is if there's an adjusting entry that's kind of throwing us off there so that we can tie this information out to the main reports, the financial statements, and explain the difference for them. And uh, we could look up what that 5,000, uh, who, who it was applied to, of course, and adjust our reports in that format. So in any case, we're going to go back to the sales uh, item summary, which we've broken out by uh, item. So these are the inventory items we have. And so we got the quantity and the amount, the percentage of sales. That's going to be the this divided by the total sales. So if we were to take a calculator out just to see what these numbers mean. We're taking the 1500 in this case divided by the 18775.4. That gives us this number if we multiply that times 100 to make it a percent. It's about 8%. About 8%. That's where the percentages are coming from. So it gives us a nice vertical type of analysis in terms of the proportion of each item that we're selling, in this case an Epiphone Les Paul guitar, the proportion of sales to total sales. And then we've got the uh, price information when we're selling inventory, the cost of goods sold, the average cost of goods sold, and um, the gross margin and the gross profit. So I won't get into too much detail on that right now. Uh, we're just basically looking at the sales information for the most part. And then the service information is a lot easier. If all we do are services, we don't have all this uh, other information in terms of the cost of sales. We can do the same proportion here in terms of, in this case, 3,800 divided by the total. 18,775 means that a, a large proportion was from Jody's guitar lessons. So guitar lessons here are accounting for 20% of our total sales. And uh, we have the average price range there. So let's be a useful, useful report to try to see what are the things we're doing well, what are the things that generate the most sales, should tie into our profit and loss statement as it does. We're going to go ahead and export this report to Excel. We already have a current Excel report that we have been using for this section. Therefore, we're going to export it to that current Excel report. So we're going to go to Excel. We're going to create a new worksheet. However, we're going to put it to a new, uh, an existing workbook, an existing workbook. We're going to select that item. We're going to browse and see if we can find that existing workbook that we would like to be going to. Select the dropdown. I'm going to go to my Get Great Guitars. We're in section four. There it is. That's the one. We're going to go. I could select open, but I'm just going to double click on it. And there it is. Then we're going to export. It's going to open up that Excel file. It's going to export this information to the Excel file in a new worksheet in the existing workbook, a new tab in other words. And then we'll do our normal type of adjustments once we have this data. Meaning, it often puts this information in out of order. So here's the last report we made. I'm going to go ahead and pull this to the right hand side. That's where we want to have it. And we're going to call this by sales by item, something like that. Then typically we go to the view tab up top. I'm going to go to the windows group and unsplit the panes. And then we're going to go down here to the layout to see how it's printing. See if it looks okay for the printing on the page layout. And it doesn't look okay. It's not okay. This isn't okay because it's, you know, the columns are on two pages. So we're going to have to make some adjustments there. And we do know that the header is up here, and that's that's nice. That's what we want. So we're going to go back to the normal view. And then it does show us kind of the page break items, which are kind of odd locations for the page break. Now, we need a couple ways we can fix this. We can try to make this a landscape view and see if that does the job. So we can go to the page uh, layout and orientation and the page setup and make it landscape and see if that does it doesn't quite do it we're still a little bit off here we're still if we go to the this view or even if we go to the last one which is the page break view it'll show us very clearly that we have a page break item right there and um, that again not acceptable because it's going to report that on a totally different page so we'll go back here and see if we can adjust anything more typically what we can adjust now is we can make all these items either go away these columns that have nothing in them, we can delete them. Or we can make them a little bit smaller. And maybe we want to try that. I'm going to try 
I'm holding down control and I'm highlighting all these non-adjacent cells and maybe we just and then I'm putting my cursor right in between here so it looks like that not like that but like that not like that but like that and then I'm just gonna make them a, a little smaller see if that does it and we'll make them really small and really small and there we have it so now it's on one page but th that's it's worth doing that and checking that out we're going to go ahead and save that it's already where we want it i'm going to save that going to close that you have the same information same kind of problems if you print this report out uh, in a pdf file or just a print it to print it and if we do that if we go to the print you got the same information if we preview uh it's not on one page wide and so we have the same kind of tactics we could use here to fix this as we have in Excel. We can close this out and we could go, hmm, how about, oh, it's already, we already have it on landscape. So we've already done that. We could try to go back and adjust the columns, meaning I could close this and try to make the columns a little bit smaller and see if that uh, hurts the data. See if it, if it makes it so the data is unreadable and then keep on going back to the print option and report and preview and see if the data is all on one page. If it's not, it doesn't look like it's, it's probably not gonna make it here uh, with that adjustment it's unless we put some time in to adjusting possibly the fonts and just you know keep making those file, those columns a little smaller. So we could go down here and just kind of cheat. We could say, why don't we just fit it to one column wide? I'm not really concerned about how many columns tall it is but I'd like it to fit on one column wide. I don't want to have the second columns printed over there. So I'm going to say preview that. And note it makes the text a bit smaller. It's not as nice because of that because it won't match other forms. But it's all on one page wide. That's important for this type of report. So we're going to say okay. That's how, we would, how I would recommend printing that.